Good morning. Today we are headed up to Algonquin Provincial Park, which is about three and a half hours north of the city between Georgian Bay and the Ottawa River. The reason that we're headed there today is because my aunt is visiting from England and she wants to see the fall colours. It's been a while for both of us since we last went. I last went back in 2018 with my brother. And I don't remember when I went last, but I've been twice before, once with one of my cousins from England and also when a friend was visiting from New Zealand. It's a great place for all things hiking, nature trails, seeing wildlife, all of that kind of stuff, so super excited to go. If you're more adventurous, you could probably even go kayaking and canoeing and do some camping. But for us, it's just a weekend trip to go hiking. Let's get it done. We're just stopping at Starbucks here in Bracebridge and then we have about another hour's drive until we get to Algonquin Park. arrived at Algonquin Park and when you get here you'll enter through either the East Gate or the West Gate. They have a welcome center and that's where you'll go in and buy your parking permit which allows you to go on all the trails along Highway 60. The thing that we didn't realize though is that now you can actually pre-register up to five days in advance online. We didn't do that so it turns out actually all of the passes for today are sold out. So we've got one for tomorrow. In the meantime today, we've been advised that we can go to Arrowhead Provincial Park, which is in Huntsville, about 45 minutes away. So we're going to register online for a pass there and go hiking. We've just arrived at Arrowhead Provincial Park and we're picking up our parking permit. At Algonquin Park, you can just register online, whereas here you can register online, but you actually have to have a paper copy to display on your dashboard. I should also mention that the parking permits are $21 a day per vehicle at each of the parks. We received this map from the permit office, which is located right here. And our plan of attack is to go around this pink trail here, which is the Arrowhead Lake Trail, and then up hopefully through the Beaver Meadow Trail and come back down to this parking lot. And if we have time, we can then do the Stubbs Fall Trail, which is right at the bottom. And we're officially starting the trail. So apparently we had the chance to see aliens, but not today. This is Lake Arrowhead and we've just almost completed our 5.1 km walk around it. Absolutely stunning. So yeah, that's 
far as that all goes, then that was actually very pleasant. The trail underfoot is just really quite soft, so actually if you've got like, bad knees or anything like that, like I do, then it's actually very nice. The only downside is it's quite closed in, so as a result you don't really get that much of an experience of seeing the colours on the trees or seeing the lake too much because it's usually blocked by something else. So visually not the best, but certainly as far as the walking goes, then very nice. You got to, got to see a couple of bits of wildlife around there as well, a couple of chipmunks, squirrels, that kind of thing. Nothing spectacular, but again, pleasant. As you can see, you can rent canoes to venture around on the lake. And it's also a really great spot to bring a picnic and hang out on the beach. So it turns out that that whole Area 51 thing was the start of the Beaver Meadows Trail, which is the second half of what we were hoping to do today. Because that's closed, then we're hoping instead to do the Stubbs Falls Trail, which is about two and a half kilometers instead. Should be nice before then heading over to our motel, before then going out to the pub. completing the Stubbs Falls Trail and it was absolutely stunning. I felt like the landscape was really different than the first hike we did today. It seemed more tree covered and the ground seemed even a little bit more dirt and fern and leave covered. It was absolutely gorgeous so highly recommend that. Yeah it's weird to think that water just flowing through some rocks in an organized fashion is just so mesmerizing but yeah just amazing. Really really enjoyed that trail for something that's significantly shorter than the one that we did previously. It's really worth it. Probably one of the absolute gems of this particular park. We're now gonna head to the Eastgate Motel, which is located near the Eastgate of Algonquin Park, where we thought we'd be hiking today in a little town called Whitney, Ontario. So that's gonna take us about an hour and a half to get to. We've just arrived at our accommodation for the night, the Algonquin Eastgate Motel. So this is our room at the Eastgate Motel. Some nice Muskoka or Adirondack chairs outside. Don't know which they are. As you enter, you open up to two double beds. I believe this is one of the renovated rooms that they offer here. And then just behind the door, you have a space to hang some coats and you also have a trolley with some tea and coffee on it a little desk space with two chairs here a little nightside table a fridge and microwave 
huge TV. And then we have the washroom over here, which is pretty basic. You have towels, toilet, sink, actually a lovely big shower that has some really nice tile on it. Ooh, and a rain shower head. Oh my gosh, actually this is like super fancy here. So, looks clean. Just something to be mindful of for whenever you do do this. This time of the year, kind of around September, October time, is definitely high season. So if you want to get any accommodation around the park, make sure you do so significantly ahead of time. Otherwise, you're going to struggle to find places to stay. But all things considered, this was one of two places and this is actually seemingly turned out all right. There were a couple of reasons as to why this ended up being the place. It's just outside the east gate of the park, so incredibly convenient location. It is actually pretty clean when it comes to it and it did look the best when we came to reserve it. The other consideration is that actually a lot of other accommodation is a two night minimum stay. So that's another thing to bear in mind for high season here. One of the main issues that we've actually found with the place that we're staying in is that there really isn't much around by way of restaurants or anything like that that seems to be open anytime beyond 7 p.m. So we've ended up coming to the nearby town of Bancroft. I say nearby, it's about a 45 minute drive down the road, but it seems to be nice enough so far and a great place to come for a pint after a long day's walking. So let's enjoy. Auntie Alexa got a quesadilla and house salad. Nick got two pieces of fish with french fries. And I have a beef and vegetable soup as well as a burger. Let's dig in. We're back at the motel after a good dinner at the Bancroft Brew Pub, but we have a really early start to tomorrow morning. So with that, take care. And keep smiling.